I will say I was surprised that they made the cameras visible. That was a surprise to me. I didn't expect them to do that. Straight on, I think it looks fine, but in terms of like, I don't know, it just doesn't line up perfectly. It makes your eyes look a little off, but I'll be real. Like the idea for me, uh, for somebody that is like working in video or in entertainment or something, being able to strap a headset to your head and then have huge screens is great. But what they mentioned was like that it's running basically iOS. That to me is a big oof. What was cool is when they showed that you could have your MacBook, the digital keyboard so dumb, but they showed the MacBook being able to have your laptop out in front of you. I wonder if they have a like specific spot where they show that working but they showed him with his like macbook pro out on the table and you can just project that screen up to a hundred inch screen if you want that to me is actually compelling that to me is much more interesting that i could be editing videos on a massive screen my question would be whether or not i can create and support multiple displays that way i doubt it because it would all be wireless but if it can do one 4K display stretch to 100 inches, if it can get to the point where it can do two or three running off of your MacBook, just projected through the headset, that would be really cool. Um, I'm surprised there's no option through that cable to also wire it direct into like a Thunderbolt port for cranking, that type of thing, but I don't know. Holy moly, their website is CCS Overload. Yeah, they used to be very like, subtle with it and now their website is like a triple a video game in graphics just to get it running it's insane it used to be very subtle and now it's just like oh my god so many videos your ram usage like triples the other thing i was expecting them to talk about and they just didn't is how this <laughs> this is so stupid is how this works with multiple people in the room wearing one headset like this like if, if I, what I thought would have been really cool is if like me and my wife were both wearing one of these and we could sit next to each other on the couch and watch like a 200 foot screen and watch a movie together. As far as I'm aware, they didn't mention anything about that. And that to me seems like the most obvious use case for the movie theater mode. You know, can you, what would you do? Are you just immediately leaving if your date shows up to the door with this and wears it the whole date? Like, what would you even do? Knock, knock. Hi, welcome in. She's got this thing glued to her face. Oh, um, hi. It's good to, good to see you. Are you going to leave that on? You know, it's fine. It's fine. I can see your eyes, which makes it okay. <laughs> <laughs> if two people are chilling together in a room, you'd think that they would show it, right? Like if there's support for that, because uh, honestly, Every, I don't think they showed two people wearing it in the same room at all. Did they? Even in this showcase or in this scene right here where it's like, yeah, this is in an office space. This is all they showed. It was just like one guy at a desk doing it. But my question is how would the, like two people in an office interact with this? I don't, I don't know, man. It, it's going to be, it's going to be weird, but I don't know. Frankly, th again, this is not something for people to just buy. This is something for professionals. And uh, one article I saw a while back, they were like, this is designed for developers to get and then to develop apps for, and in like five years, it'll be worth getting. Like it, in, in years and years and years, this will be ready for you to see and use. But right now it just doesn't, it, it's not, the saying that fam what was like what's another apple device that was total trash for the first generation or two and then it got really good later on because haven't i had a few like that i think airpods was always pretty good the max i mean by the time you get back to it it's not really relevant anymore the apple watch was the apple watch that bad though what was the first i don't even remember what it looked like first gen apple watch damn boy honestly it doesn't look that different <laughs> it's way smaller i do get what some of the like leaked engineers were were talking about though because they described this as a really cool and impressive piece of technology that didn't really solve any issue it didn't really do anything novel and frankly this is just what we've seen with all of the meta stuff meta's headsets have done pretty much all of this for a while it's just Apple's version of it. And maybe that's enough, but 
I don't know, wireless charging. I know there's some tech they have where it's like beamed charging where you set up like, um, like different pillars or boxes or something in the room. I saw a video on it a while back, but basically they can track where a device is in the room and then they beam whatever waves to it, triangulating its location, beam to it so they can charge it anywhere in the room. So you can set it here and it'll charge it. You can move it over there and it'll charge it because it can track it and then beam whatever waves to it. Apparently it's hella inefficient though. Like if you're, if you send out a hundred Watts, probably one is getting to the phone effectively. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't work, but 3,500 bucks. The rumor was 3000. So it actually came in more expensive than the rumors, but let's see this unpopular opinion. Apple vision is underwhelming for 3,500 bucks. Good features, but not seven X better than the meta VR for 500. It's ugly and bulkier versus Unreal. I haven't tried Unreal. I think that's the wrong Unreal. <laughs> Um, 3,500 excludes most people. That's true. Yes. Apple will make leading apps, but this isn't an iPhone moment. I agree. It's not an iPhone. <laughs> I agree. It's not an iPhone moment, but, uh, I, I think what was leaked beforehand is that this was being put out at a high price tag because this is being sold to developers. And developers are going to build apps and stuff for it that make it much more useful. And at that point, Apple can come in and cut the price or, or whatever they want to do to make it more justifiable. Right now, this is like the PSVR 2 all over again. It's a cool piece of technology. It's super impressive, but it just doesn't really make sense for 99.9% .9 of people. I don't know. I, I mean, about a quarter of you guys are saying you would buy this, which is honestly a little surprising, but it's a breakthrough. What, what is like, what specifically is a breakthrough about this though? Cause uh, pretty much every single thing they described it doing the meta quest pro, whatever already did. And I'm pretty sure it's cheaper. What is going to separate it is the software and I mean, maybe you could say like the front display is revolutionary. I think it looks really bad, but maybe in person, it looks way better in the videos. It didn't look good. I'm going to be real. It's a breakthrough that the real world had already broken through. Apple people always say anything they add is a breakthrough. Well, like if, if it's something unique, then it's a breakthrough. If it's something other people have done, it's iterative. But if it's something other people have done, but you do it in such a new and exciting way that it's effectively different, then it's a breakthrough. Sure. But I, I don't think anything they showed was really that crazy. And for 3,500 bucks, what they showed was kind of like bare minimum. Like you're going to see some hipsters for sure at coffee shops using this. And they're going to be very exaggerated with all of it. You better believe they're going to strap it to their head sitting at the the cafe drinking their latte scrolling looking like they're casting spells as they do it having a gay old time but again for 99 percent of people you would buy this thing and probably use it a few times and then move on i'm sure it's comfy i'm sure it looks great i'm sure the displays are very impressive and software wise it's got to be very very cool um but the whole thing with this meta quest or meta world thing is like this where you're wearing a headset like this while interacting with other people that aren't wearing it. And that's just weird. It just is, it just is. I'm sorry. Maybe one day it won't be, but right now it's just considered weird. If, if I went over to somebody's house and they were wearing this while I was talking to them, I'd be like, can you chill? Like, can you stop please? It's just weird. And again, easy thing for them to talk about that they didn't is what happens when multiple people are wearing these. If two people in the same house are wearing them, easiest feature announcement would be, yeah. And you, you and your spouse or friends can wear these and experience movies together. Kind of like, um, what is it? Big screen on the quest ecosystem on the Oculus ecosystem where you can have you and your friends sitting in a virtual movie theater together watching videos together. It's amazing. It's awesome. You can watch like whole movies cast on this massive screen. What FPS is this? They did not announce anything like that. Frankly, 
The screen, I think, is better than no screen. If this was just black or with a big Apple logo square between the eyes, I think that would look worse. I think this is interesting as a concept because it kind of, especially what they showed with like, maybe they'll show it here, with the, the little screen dancing with colors as you're sitting there using it, that tells people, okay, this is being in use. It, they don't see me. And then it clears away once somebody comes into frame. Like they're showing this, like somebody's going to be walking, like this lady's folding laundry or no, unpacking her luggage and she's wearing the headset. So like you get to the hotel room and you just strap it on as you unpack your laundry. Maybe it would be cool if you could put like a screen up in the corner so then you can like watch a YouTube video while you do your bits and bops. I could see that. That's yeah, cool tech, but it's not 3,500 bucks cool. Well, it's 3,500 bucks. And as of right now, like iOS apps, the laptop projection is cool. But if you think about that, then you have a $3,500 headset to basically make your $2,500 laptop look bigger. And maybe that's worth it to you. But I mean, by the time we are six grand in, I think there's better ways that you could have made your screen look bigger for 3,500 bucks. You could just buy a 85 inch TV. You could buy a projector that projects it onto an actual wall at 150 inches, like and plug it in. Like, you know, it's tough to justify. Um, the only way we would be able to adopt this technology is, was a good version would be Neuralink integrating into your contact lenses or something that's the only commonly adopted version of this. Maybe it is the fact, or maybe it is the case that eventually this won't be that weird. Somebody wearing a headset like this on a date or when you're meeting your friend or something, maybe this isn't considered that weird. It'll just be like, oh, those are your glasses, whatever. Okay. But to me, this looks really weird. This is uncomfortable. And if my friends were doing this while we were hanging out, I would make fun of them and spray them with a water bottle. They would leave me no choice. I, I think, again, this is a really cool piece of tech, but framing it and trying to sell it as a, a device that you'll use just as frequently as your iPhone or that it's something, yeah, you'll just walk around the house with it on. That, I think, is is a weird way of selling it because most people are not going to use it that way because it's just it's weird it's just a weird thing i can technically wear that oculus quest headset around the house i could do that because it has p like pass through video i could do that i don't know why i would but i can and maybe the quality of this thing is that crazy high that you just honestly forget you're wearing it it's like that south park episode where where uh cartman puts on the headset forgets he's wearing it and gets so immersed in the world that it's like inception Maybe it is that comfy and that realistic with just crazy high fidelity. It's possible. I also want to know, because this is like a glass cover that goes over the cameras, I want to know what they do if this thing gets smudged. Like if you put it on and adjust it with like your palms and your palms are oily or something and that scuffs it, is your vision just super scuffed until you clean it? You know, I read an article where they were saying the manufacturer of this thing has been a nightmare because it has a curved like silicon motherboard. It has a curved glass panel that goes in front of it. All these cameras are curved. Like it's been an absolute nightmare during manufacturing. They crack a ton of these things. It's just a nightmare. Luke, is this an, or is this a common Apple W or an unheard of Apple L? I don't think it's it's either. I think this is just a thing that happened. I, we've all known about this. This has been leaked forever. I don't think this really excites a ton of people. There are some people who will buy it first gen and that it just is what it is. I don't think they should, but there are people who are going to do that. And those people might love it. But realistically, I don't think this device as a Vision Pro becomes practical for 99% of people until probably gen two or gen three for me this whole thing everything they've shown off is technologically very impressive the headset i'm sure is amazing to use and later today we'll get videos of people that are actually trying it at the event right now and we'll be blown away and it's gonna be like oh wow that looks so cool and it runs so great and it, it's amazing to use but frankly what's gonna make this or break this is the software and that's why they're trying to target it at developers because they need them to get some really amazing stuff out right now like they're showing yeah you can use your notes app and safari 
and Keynote. I don't know when the last time is that I used any of those apps, but it's because it's basically an iOS system running in the headset. So they just have to find a way to get some big boy apps on this thing or supported by this thing or double up the support for like the MacBook integration. So you can use your MacBook and then it projects the screens up and you get a multiple screens. That would be cool. They ever say what the battery life was? Yeah, I think they said two hours on battery or all day if plugged in. Oh, this was also a bold choice. You have to buy separate Zeiss optical inserts if you wear glasses to use. It doesn't have like the Quest where you it has an insert so you can just use your glasses inside the headset. You have to pay extra for Zeiss optical lenses to be put on, which I'm sure is going to work great, very minimal. It's just going to snap in really, really nicely. But I, you, these things are going to be hundreds of dollars. Zeiss makes like the top of the line like camera lenses and stuff. This lens right here is a Zeiss. Um, there's the logo right there. Zeiss, Zeiss. And these things are stupid expensive. There's no way this is cheaper than like hundreds of dollars. So if you have bad vision, I'm sorry. And then there, an aluminum, sorry, I'll say it like they do at Apple. Aluminium. Encased battery can be slipped into a pocket for portable power. It connects using a woven braid cable. Yeah, but they don't, they don't show how it connects to the battery bank because they show this cable. And then this one looks like it goes straight into the battery bank. Like it's all in one, like you can't detach it. So that makes me think, do you have to buy a separate cable from this one that goes out to USB-C to charge it plugged into the wall? Also, how do you charge this thing? Is there another USB-C cable under this? Do you like daisy chain? Do you plug in a wall adapter and then a USB cable to this? And then it runs through this as the power supply and then out here? Maybe? I I don't know. It does seem like something they're just not going to talk about though because <laughs> they don't they don't want to. I will say my MacBook has this braided cable and the braided cable is phenomenal. It feels great, super tough. Way better than the rubbery stuff they used to do. I understand there's no way to get this device working with the fidelity it's using without having an external battery that either is strapped to the back of your head or goes into a pocket. They decided to go into a pocket because the headset will be more comfortable. I totally understand that. I get it. But it does just look stupid. It just does. I'm sorry. It just does. Tim Cook kept reframing it. He kept being like, this is our first step in a long journey of virtual, whatever he called it, like three-dimensional or spatial computing. First step in spatial computing. And maybe it is the case that this just is a different thing. It's a different animal. Uh, and it will just take years to get there. But as of right now, I just don't see it, frankly. Vision Pro is designed for like, as far as I can tell, they're trying to build it for people who work in professional settings, need lots of screen real estate, probably traveling professionals who want to be able to bring their workstation with them or their workspace with them rather. And that's who it's for. It's not for gamers. It's not for casual users. It's not for a family device. This is for rich people to feel like they're using something really cutting edge, which frankly, it probably is very cutting edge, but this is something for rich people to, to buy, to feel special like that. That's just what it is. Um, whereas this thing is a great device, but it's built for like uh, more price aware. Casual sounds bad, but just more more um, casual use cases. People who are gaming, people who are just hanging out, want to play Beat Saber with their friends. Like I would be scared to hand off the <laughs> the Apple Vision Pro to a friend or to like. A little sibling or something because i'd be like don't drop it if you drop it like this 3500 dollars device is useless so please don't drop it i'd be super stressed sharing this with anybody whereas this thing it's like yeah you can probably kick it and it's fine whatever so we'll see what hopefully this all means though is that it's going to kick up competition people are going to start you know stuff's going to start to get really really interesting because people are going to start to see a lot more apps developed for it we're going to start to see a lot of different studios 
tackling this and, and that's my hope that's my hope sounds like no one at the event gets to touch or use the vision pro what that's wild this is an event for developers to get their hands on the device to make apps for it and they're not even letting the devs touch much less use it like they don't even get to see it in person that's bizarre because my understanding correct me if i'm wrong is that wwdc is the worldwide developer conference and it is built and designed for developers from all over the world to come together and meet with apple engineers and figure out how to develop the next generation of crazy tech and like that's what it's built for and they brought them here to announce their first new product in a decade. And it's just, it's, it's not something they can even touch. They can't even look at it. It's not even in like a glass case and they can't even look at it. Well, it's probably in a glass case, actually. He says no one gets to touch or use it. So they probably can see it. But that's weird, man. I, I don't know, man. That's weird. You think gaming on Vision Pro is dead on arrival without a controller? Uh, no, I mean, I think you, I, I'd be shocked if you couldn't connect like a PlayStation five or Xbox controller through Bluetooth to it. But surely that's a thing. The, the whole thing is just weirding me out. And I think it's weirding a lot of people out. And right now it's kind of the calm before the storm because we've seen it. We saw the event. We saw them talk about it in very, very like controlled instances and in a very controlled environment. But this whole thing is going to get shaken up very, very quickly once journalists and media actually gets to talk about it openly tonight when they get back from this event. So I would guess that there's going to be some pretty negative reactions if it's true that those guys are at this event and can't even like try the damn thing. That's crazy. Why are people comparing this to the Quest 3? Because there's a lot of really, really stupid people out there. Um, <laughs> it's not It's not really that they're stupid. Some of them are, I'm sure. But more than anything, I think it's that they are either intentionally misrepresenting the target audience or they don't understand it. I would guess that they're more intentionally misunderstanding it or misrepresenting it because clearly this thing is not marketed towards casual gamers or people who are not working professionals. This is not meant for somebody in high school to buy. Okay. Or even college. This is, it's not built for that. So it's like complaining that a Ford F-250 kitted out is very expensive for high school students. It's like, yeah, well, it's not made for you. So of course it is. Like, what are you talking about? No, it's not made for you. Like it's made for this other group, you know? And, and so to compare them just shows either that somebody's misrepresenting it or that they just so totally don't understand it that they just are incapable of grasping the, the basic concept that this is meant for working professionals and not everything is designed for you. Um, like I work in video. We make videos day in, day out. And I am having trouble coming up with a reason to buy this thing. And it's designed for like working professionals in media. So are like the other Mac studios and Mac pros, because there's a lot of other moving pieces to it. So I'm like, oh, well, we'd have to move our whole production process over to like Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve. And then doing that, we would have to figure out, we have to convert all of our templates over and all of our effects over. And it would just be this, this, and that. You know, there's so many little pieces that go into it. <music> Took my thing!